The head of the UN's Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA, has denounced a move by Switzerland to cut aid to the body. UNRWA chief Philip Lazzarini deplored the agency's chronic underfunding. UNRWA does have a budget of over a billion dollars a year. It runs most of the schools in Gaza, including those where terrorist activities have been uncovered by the IDF. A recently freed Israeli hostage told a journalist that he had been held captive by an UNRWA teacher. Joining me now, Hillel Noya is the Executive Director of United Nations Watch. Great to have you with us, uh, Hillel. So Switzerland, first of all, um, has been UNRWA's ninth largest donor in the world. What drove them to make this move, to cut the aid? Well, look, uh, according to the latest information, the Swiss Senate decided not to approve the decision of the lower house. But uh, having said that, the uh, decision of the uh, National Council of Switzerland to um, to to cut the aid is very significant. The member of parliament who brought the motion, whose name is David Zuber Buller, said, quote, it's an open secret that in UNRWA schools, they continue to glorify terrorism, incite violence and promote anti-Semitism. This is the words of the Swiss MP. He said a majority of the National Council has finally recognized this. So certainly our organization, UN Watch, which is based in Switzerland, we have published numerous times in Swiss media the fact that UNRWA teachers systematically incite to anti-Semitism, the fact that UNRWA schools have been used by Hamas to hide rockets, to hide weapons. So all of this is known in Switzerland, and I think it's quite significant that the lower house has taken this step uh, at this time, even if uh, so far this Senate has not approved it. All right, so this move by the um, Swedish uh, lawmakers, uh, Swiss lawmakers, sorry. Can we expect other European countries to follow suit, do you think? I, I think the certainly the Swiss decision um, uh, of the lower house was publicized around the world. I did see many other countries asking, what about us? And I think it is time. Bear in mind something that is, has often been forgotten. Two years ago, the head of UNRWA in Gaza, his name was Matthias Schmel, he gave an interview where he unwittingly acknowledged that Israel complies with the laws of war. He was asked if Israel's strikes back in 2021 were precise. He said, yes, they were, they were very precise, meaning they only targeted Hamas terrorists and they didn't target civilians. For saying the truth, he was pilloried uh, by Hamas uh, in the media in Gaza. He was declared persona non grata. Him and his deputy of UNRWA had to flee Gaza. They were unable to stay. They had to leave their job. So the head of Hamas actually decided who would head UNRWA in Gaza. Moreover, and this, Laura, is really important, Lenny Stenseth, who is a Norwegian, former Norwegian diplomat, she is took over his job, Matthias Schmel. She went to Gaza. She met with Yahya Sinwar. So the evil terrorist who the mastermind who orchestrated the mass rape and killings and massacres deputy commissioner general lenny stenseth met with sinwar and said she basically she apologized according to reports from the meeting which she has never disputed she apologized for what her deputy uh, for what her predecessor matthias schmel had said which was the truth and basically in so many words, pledged allegiance to work closely with uh, Hamas um, and sort of no, never to say bad things about, about the Hamas narrative again. Uh, this is the Deputy Commissioner General of UNRWA had met with Yahya Sinwar and basically, in, in my interpretation, pledged allegiance. This is UNRWA. Wow. Shocking. I mean, UNRWA is unique uh, anyway, isn't it? It's the only uh, refugee agency that looks after the descendants of, of refugees. Um, as I mentioned in the introduction, its budget is about one billion dollars a year, largely coming from American and European taxpayers. Um, what does it actually do for the Palestinian people? Because that's an awful lot of money, isn't it, for any aid agency? Well, well yeah, I mean, you know, actually it's the Swiss foreign minister, uh, again, Switzerland, five years ago, uh, Ignacio Cassis, after visiting UNRWA facilities in the region, he said UNRWA is part of the problem, not part of the solution. As you said, Laura, he said they're perpetuating the refugee problem, they're not solving it, and he said the fact that we're paying for it is perverse. So unlike the UN Refugee Agency, which is also in Geneva, the UNHCR, their job is to resettle refugees, to make you no longer a refugee. UNRWA is the opposite. They've taken what were a few hundred thousand refugees back in 1948, 49, and made them into six or seven million. And they're doing everything not to resettle them. So if someone from Gaza wants to flee and go to America or to the West, UNRWA will say, no, you are always a refugee and you always need to go back to pre-1967 Israel. 
So they speak of a two-state solution, but the UNRWA narrative is basically to dismantle Israel itself. Right. There's only one UN agency, isn't there, to look after all of the other refugees in the world, but only UNRWA takes care of uh, Palestinian refugees, as you say. If UNRWA is part of the rebuilding and the future of Gaza, will anything change? That is a very good question. I mean, the truth is they are the largest agency. So for many Europeans and others, they assume it's natural to ask them to step in. But given the narrative, given, as I said, that when when uh, someone said one word that was true in an interview for, for maybe 20 seconds, he acknowledged that it was true that Israel's actions were precise, he was uh, forced to leave. An agency like that, which is so uh, dependent uh, on a, a terrorist group, it cannot be trusted to take care of civilian matters that are for the benefit of the Palestinian population, let alone the UN's own principles um, of neutrality and humanitarianism. Now, you've been talking about this for many years, and I know Hillel, um, but do you think this war has, has opened a lot of people's eyes as to what exactly UNRWA is? I do think there are a number of people around the world. The fact that, again, that the majority, a large majority in the lower house of the Swiss parliament voted to defund UNRWA shows that, that we've reached a certain point. By the way, it's happened on the same day that Switzerland voted to ban Hamas unanimously. So those happened together at the same time. It's not accidental. The same Swiss parliament that banned Hamas voted to defund UNRWA. As I said, the Senate did not approve it, but that indicates that even Switzerland, neutral Switzerland, has there some enough people have begun to wake up that an agency that claims to be solving the problem is actually perpetuating it. We need to do something. We can't let things remain business as usual. And we should help Palestinians. They need help. But the fact that there's a political agenda-driven agency that is managing all of this, we've seen that they haven't solved anything. And in fact, they're the ones who educated the terrorists of October 7th. Many of them are graduates of UNRWA schools. Hillel Neuer at United Nations Watch. Thank you. Thank you.